Welcome to this week's online worship from the Falmouth and Glenack Methodist Circuit. I am the Reverend Jonathan Frogger, the Superintendent Minister, and this is my wife Louise, who's helping me for this week's worship. This is the third Sunday in Advent, and on this third Sunday, we light the third candle as a symbol of joy. We also leave the second candle unlit as a symbol of our hope for peace in Israel and Palestine. And a reading from Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendour. Today we remember and honour Joseph, betrothed to Mary, who was obedient to God's call. We also remember those who have suffered for their faith, those who have been belittled, persecuted, rejected, even killed because of their trust in God. Now let us pray. We give thanks for those among us who trust in you and are not afraid, who know the peace and joy of God, who is their strength and salvation. May we all place our trust in Christ, who is our everlasting joy. Amen. Amen. And we sing together our first hymn, Number 178 from Singing the Faith, Long Ago Prophets New.
So we join together in prayer. We praise you, God of wisdom, for Mary and Joseph, whom you chose to star in the astonishing events of Christ's birth. When our lives are overturned by the unexpected and you reach out to us in dreams, grant us their love and courage that we may be open to your prompting and witness as they were to the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our reading is taken from Matthew 1, reading from verses 18 to 25. Joseph accepts Jesus as his son. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfil what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as, as, as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until after she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. I wonder what pictures you have had on your Christmas cards. If by any chance you have Christmas cards with a nativity scene alongside the robins and the snow scene, look out for Joseph. He's often standing in the background, in the shadows. Almost always the focus is just on Mary the infant and the infant Jesus. Yet Joseph played a vital role in the unfolding story of the birth of Jesus. God's gift of love to a needy world. Imagine Joseph's turmoil of mind. No wonder he was not sleeping too well. What will people be thinking of him and Mary now that it's discovered that she's pregnant? It is now that he has a dream. And in the dream, an angel appears to him and says, Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. What is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. And she will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. When, Jesus, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel had commanded him. But imagine the reaction of his family and friends. How would they understand? His actions demanded just as much faith as Mary when she accepted God's call to her to be the mother of Jesus. It showed Joseph as a man of deep faith, obedience and commitment. We need to remember that we know the whole story of how God's plan was working through Jesus' birth. But Joseph didn't. He was caught up in the middle of it and he showed faith and trust when he did not fully understand. He had the openness to God's plans and purposes working through his life. I wonder, are we open to God guiding us, speaking in our dreams? Are we ready to say yes to God's call? What might that mean for you in 2024? For some of us, maybe something simple. For others, perhaps a step that could change the lives of many. 
So we now join to sing our second hymn from Singing the Faith 204 in the bleak midwinter. Let us now join together for our prayers of intercession. Light in our darkness, come to us, we pray, when daylight is far off at the darkest and coldest time of the year. Come when hope is low. Whisper to us your promise that your home is among mortals. Whisper to us your promise of a world made new. Light in our darkness, we pray for hungry children, struggling with the impacts of poverty on their lives. For schools who are often doing the work of feeding and clothing, and for churches, libraries and other spaces in our communities that are welcoming people for warmth and company in freezing temperatures. In a system that sometimes seems deaf to basic needs for food, shelter and warmth, may we, your church, be responsive and generous with what we have, so that others might have their basic needs met. Disperse the long shadows that surround us, lighten our pathway and show us the way to go and lead us on towards the light of your coming. Amen. Amen. We'll now join together in our Lord's Prayer. Our Amen. Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We now sing our final hymn, number 213, O Little Town of Bethlehem. final prayer and then a blessing. May the God who knows where you come from and where you should be going go with you. May the God who knows your hopes and dreams bless you and others through you more than you can possibly imagine. May the God who was with Joseph and Mary in all that they faced be known to you as Emmanuel. God with you. Amen. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love this Advent and Christmas and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>